Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to pollinate Saracenia flowers. So as you can probably see behind me the Saracenia flowers are starting to open in various forms and you can see by the tags I've already done a couple of crosses as well. Also getting my first Saracenia pictures finally open so I'm definitely a lot um, further behind than I was last year. Um, usually I would have done most of my crosses by now and I'm kind of probably in the midst of it at the moment. Um, I'll quickly turn the camera around in a second just to show you what the Saracenia's um, flowers all look like as a group because it's looking quite nice at the moment and I will then obviously show you how to pollinate some of the flowers so while I'm out here doing my other crosses I might as well show you um, on the video so it'll be nice obviously for other growers to know. Um, I really personally like growing Saracenia from seed, I find it incredibly rewarding so although it does take about four years until you get a um, mature flowering Saracenia plant from seed sometimes it could be even longer um, you know it's really rewarding what you can get from the um, end of it so I'll probably also show some of the seedlings that I've got coming up they start to get their new pictures for this year so I've got some really nice interesting you see the real variation between the crosses as well and obviously you don't get that from you know different plants so you can create something completely different and it will be all yours and it's something you know new and you know interesting okay so you can see here a nice selection of flowers that I've got this year and obviously you could also start seeing the pictures that start to come through so I've got some more Saratina on this side with a couple of flowers open so as you can see, nice um, selection of both Lucophila, Flava and different hybrid um, flowers as well, all different sizes. So you can see they're very unique, different um, beautiful flowers at the same time. So some could be like really rich kind of burgundy in colour, so that one is from my camisole. And you can also have like more of a coppery one, which I find the Tygo has a really nice coppery kind of flower to match the pictures. So that's a Tygo picture there, you can see the flowers very similar to the actual plant. I've got like my Chanel's Ghost, which is like an all greeny kind of yellowy type of flower. And very unique uh, at the back here is my Saracenia Tarnock flowers. So these have like the double headed flower. Um, usually these are sterile, which means you can't get seed from these. But I like to keep the flowers on them because they're obviously quite unique and different. Okay, so before we pollinate the Saracenia flower, I'm just going to go through the very basics of the flower anatomy. So this is basically the shape of your flower, this umbrella shape underneath here. So if you basically lift up one of the petals in here, if I can focus on that, you'll be able to seal the pollen, which sits with loads of it in there at the base of the umbrella. And the bits that dangle down here are the anthers, which drop the pollen. And you'll find on each bits of this umbrella shape here, you'll have a little stub, which I'll just try and out there so that little stub that's just on the inside of the leaf there that is the stigma which is where you put the pollen so i'm going to be crossing this is a lacophila pubescent flower and i'm going to be crossing it with this flower at the back here which is my tapestry cross llama um which is a nice lovely dark kind of um, saracenia so these two um, parents are actually really nice plants got this plant from wax last year so I've already done a cross with this one with the camisole the tapestry um, across the camisole purely because they both have quite long lids so I thought that'd be interesting to see and then I thought I'd pick the two best looking flowers at the moment so these two have, have been open for about two days each they've dropped a fair amount of pollen and I thought they obviously due to the shape as well they're not sticking out they're a nice shape to work with for the video and it might still make an interesting cross because it's quite a dark one but obviously the Lacophila um, pubescent is obviously a nice white um, Lacophila and obviously has the fuzzy outside of the um, picture as well so it could create some interesting seedlings so I'm going to be taking the pollen from this flower and placing it at the one in the back okay so I've just angled the camera around and this is I'm going to try and do it the best that I can to show you how to do this so basically I'm going to lift up one of the petals and I'm going to get the paintbrush and simply place it in where the pollen is and then scoop up some pollen onto the paintbrush here. So with a lot of um, the Saracenia you will find you'll be able to get quite a lot of pollen which you know you could either cross onto two flowers or you could repeat it just to make sure that you get loads of seeds and it's successful by repeating this process like tomorrow for example onto the same flower just so they'll see you got more pollen. And then literally, as I said before, you're going to place the pollen onto the stigma. So I literally just wipe a bit on there like that. 
and because I've put actually quite a lot on my um, paintbrush I could go around and you want to um, wipe some of the pollen on each of the stigmas so there's five of them which is all the bits that lift up and you want to put the pollen on each of them so I'm simply just going to go around and put the pollen on each bit so you can use anything from like a paintbrush you can use a cotton bud cocktail stick a little metal spatula um, or even I've seen people just use their hands however you find that is the easiest to transfer the pollen I like to use a paintbrush but I have also used a metal spatula in the past as well but I find that the paintbrush also uh, kind of gets quite a nice bit. If you wanted to, you can get some more pollen from the flower and go around. I have coated each of them, but if I wanted to, I could go back in here and get even more pollen. And I could go around again if I really wanted to, um, but I prefer to do it either the next day or sometimes I won't repeat it. Depends how much you know I want the cross and just make sure it's successful. So that's basically the very, very simple process of how to do it. After you've pollinated the flowers, you may want to place a bag over the top and this is simply to stop pollinators such as bees, hoverflies or um, any other um, pollinating insects transferring pollen into your flower that obviously is not what you want to cross it with. So this is just so that I know that it will be a Chanel's gross, um, Ghost Cross Heterophylla and obviously will not have um, any other pollen from any of the other um, neighbouring flowers obviously transferred by other pollinators so it just helps kind of ensure that your crosses are what you want them to be. After you pollinate your flower eventually the petals will start to fall off so they'll look like this they'll be like a um, wilted and dried out then they will drop off which will then reveal this which is basically you'll be able to see the bud in the middle and that will eventually swell up to make your seeds. So the seed um, basically does take a very long time to mature. So I won't harvest these until about September, October time, probably later this year due to how late I'm doing the crosses. So they take anywhere between like three, four months in order to um, get a brown pod that starts cracking. And that's when you would harvest the seed. So it does take a very long time until you get seed, but you do know obviously when you get it, because this will definitely change color. They often swell up a bit more. So you kind of, you can kind of tell whether you're going to get seed based on how swollen the bud is. They will stay very, very thin if obviously um, has not been um, pollinated successfully. And if it has been pollinated, then you'll have a nice swollen bud and eventually all these outer bits and the umbrella shape will drop off and you'll literally be left with the stem and just the pod. And it's just a very long process, but when it's brown, when it starts to crack, it will reveal the seeds inside and that's when it's ready to harvest. A couple of people have also asked me about how to store Saratinia pollen. So this is my Lacophila burgundy flower. So this is a flower that I want to cross with one of my flowers that I've got outside of my bog barrels. And because the bog barrels are more behind than what's in the greenhouse, I would like to save this pollen and then once they're ready outside and open, I can pollen and cross pollinate those. So there's two ways um, that I have used before. Um, there's also a lot of other ways that I've seen people use. So one of the ways is simply by getting a paintbrush and then locating the pollen inside the flower. And then once you get a decent amount of pollen on the flower, you simply get one of these uh, Ziploc type bags and place the brush with the pollen on the inside and then basically seal it up, keep it in the fridge. Obviously keep a bit of um, pollen at the bottom as well. And then you simply take that straight back out and then use it onto your obviously, next um, flower of choice. And the other method I use is I get like a um, one of those um, curry pot dishes with the sauces in and I'll simply place the pollen in here. It's quite hard to do on the camera because the flower's quite high up, but I basically will scoot the pollen out of there on the paintbrush, tap it into here and then place the lid on the top. So it's like an airtight lid that you basically just place over the top and seal it. I'll then label these ones and stack them in the fridge. And then I don't like to keep the pollen more than a week. So I usually only have it in the fridge for a week. But that's usually only enough, um, just enough time, obviously, until the next flowers open. You can leave it longer. And I've heard that obviously people have um, left it longer as well and still been successful. But for me, I like to say just a week, just to be on the safer side. Um, you don't want to store the pollen wet either. So when you're um, scooping up the pollen, you might find that it's some nectar 
um, or you know it could have been wet from the rain or something whatever you do you do not want to keep it wet because obviously it makes it go mouldy in the fridge and obviously it won't be viable so the best to do collects the fresh dry pollen and obviously use it as quick as possible but the fridge just kind of helps prolong the life of the pollen a little bit longer so you can get the crosses that you would like and just to show this is what I do so this is all the pollen that I can get out of this flower that I've placed in the um, container and I'll then put a label on this now and put it in the fridge so this is the one I'm actually going to use for um, my uh, plants outside so that's what I'm going to go straight in the fridge and then hopefully in a few days time I'll be able to do the flower on the bog barrels and obviously continue the rest of my crosses once you receive seed from your Saracenia, simply sow it. I've left all these outside in the greenhouse over winter to stratify naturally. So the stratification period is needed. They need four to six weeks of cold and um, moist temperatures. So that could either be done by putting them in kitchen roll in the fridge, or these ones were left in the greenhouse, hence why they're only germinating now. You can see when they first start germinating, they have like two non-carnivorous leaves, they're the first leaves. And in the middle of them, you can get the first pictures that come through. So the little red bits in the middle of those leaves are the new pictures that come through, which eventually will then look like that. So you can see where these are starting to form pictures. And then you'll see they'll start getting a little bit bigger as they go on. So that's a good indication of obviously what you get. And this is my big tray of Saracenia seedlings. So very different um, crosses I've got here. So I've got the Wilkinson Cross Inspiration. Um, I've got this Flava Cross um, Capri. So you can see here, I quite like this one because of how long the lid is. So this is one cross that I did myself. These are two plants I've got and I did a couple of years back. You can see it's got quite a nice lid there. It's kind of got the copper tone from obviously the Capri. But it's also got obviously the nice yellowing coloration of the Flava too. So you can see here the difference between some more Leah Wilkinson Cross Inspirations. Definitely got the height in some of them as well. It's really nice pale colours here. That's a Leviathan Cross Monster, once again gives you the height. Over here I've got quite a few Arthur Wheeler Cross Asbo seedlings. So you can see the difference between them. Some of them you can definitely see the Asbo in them due to the wide um, mouth. So that's quite a nice one there. Others of them you can see kind of ranging colour. So you've got the coppery asbo colour. You've also got kind of a darker, um, more of a pinky colour in some of these as well. With obviously you can see how some of these are going to have some really nice large lids too. So it's nice to obviously have to see how they progress. And obviously I've got several here. And then these are seedlings. So the ones at the back here are my chosen Lacophila Cross Walkson's White Knight seedlings, which I sowed five years ago. They've all got quite nice mature pictures on them now and I've selected 12 out I think of a batch of 85 that I had originally and then these ones that I've got which you can see are quite tall this year are my almost all black um, black widow cross sh141 saracenias so these got really black last year and I've got just three of those which I've selected from the batch okay so that's a quick tutorial of how to pollinate your saracenia flowers i think it's nice to actually look on everything as a whole so i both had obviously um saracenias in flower i had the saracenia seeds that have just started to germinate and i also had a selection of my saracenia seeds um, that i've done myself having pictures for the first time so it kind of shows you a great process of how they go and even different ages so obviously like i said my five-year-old um saracenia lacophila hybrids that i've got um, we'll get a little bit taller as the year goes on. I always find the cofflers perform best later on in the year when it starts to get a bit cooler again. But they had some really nice height on them last year, so some of them I have selected for their height um, primarily. So I'm hoping to get some nice displays off of those. And same with my Black Widow crosses, I do believe they're either three or four years old this year. So it's kind of nice to see different generations. Obviously, I think this is yeah like my fifth generation of um, seed sowing and seed crossing as well. So it's nice, obviously, to have that kind of variation and also nice each year to get a different display of flowers and different plants and more rarer plants flowering at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's helped in making your first Saracenia crosses.